Today I am heading back into Dinosaur National Monument for my first time since getting off my river expedition. I'm actually going to be looking at tons and tons of dinosaur bones today. I am really excited. This is kind of getting me back onto my original road trip plans to head into Dinosaur National Monument, really explore around, see the bones and everything like that. So, Even though I spent four days inside Dinosaur National Monument with Dinosaur River Expeditions, um, I haven't actually seen any dinosaur bones yet. So I'm heading inside the Wall of Bones, the Cory exhibit. Um, I am so excited to be seeing this because there is supposed to be like hundreds if not thousands of fossils. Let's go check it out. tour road guide and I'm gonna follow it step by step down Cub Creek Road it looks like there's some petroglyphs maybe like an ancient homestead ancient an old homestead um, so I'm gonna do this it says it'll take me about an hour and then after that I'm gonna head back to the Colorado side okay my pamphlet says that stop number one is called the swelter shelter um, there is some stone tools here that are believed to be up to 7,000 years old. Um, just some ancient artifacts, pictographs, petroglyphs. Um, those were made by the Fremont people about a thousand years ago. So um, I'm excited to have a little bit more information than the petroglyphs I walked around yesterday in Nine Mile Canyon, which I knew nothing about. Um, so this is pretty cool. I'm going to take my little guide with me, read all about it when I get up there. So let's get hiking.
just want to share a little tip if you choose to do the hike up to the lizard petroglyph it's pretty strenuous my little guidebook made it seem like it was just a nice little stroll up to the top to go see these um first of all so i recommend water but then second if you're not like physically fit or don't feel comfortable hiking up there it is very loose and leads up to the edge you can actually see the lizards where the um, rock it's really dark they're right imprinted in there so I recommend bringing a pair of binoculars and maybe just standing on the side of the road right by where the little trail marker start is um, I accidentally followed that trail don't take that trail stay to the left and go up to where the dark places the the dark rocks um, that's where you'll find the little infographic sign and where the trail actually leads the trail that way just kind of scrambles off and wasn't very easy to follow um, cannot recommend it enough but seriously you can see it right there from the road i kind of wish i had just done that with my big zoom lens and i wouldn't have had to walk all that way up insider tip the last stop on this uh driving tour is a homestead of a super badass lady named josie morris she lived in this canyon wrangling cattle horses cows building cabins using the water from like the 30s to the 60s here. She had five husbands and uh, none of them lasted. She died single when she broke her hip on the ice, um, trying to fish, I think, out here on the water. And uh, yeah, super cool lady, just kind of showing how hard and tough life was, but how doable it was out here. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's a cool last stop. Lots of history. She's also possibly associated with the outlaw Butch Cassidy. She was accused twice of stealing horses and cattle, though she was never um, actually charged or found guilty of those. So again, just super cool little history fact. And uh, this is the last stop on this driving tour. Could you imagine building a house like this without any power tools, cars, phones, electricity? This is incredible. This is beautiful. I mean, I'd live here. It's a little slanty and a, got some windows knocked out, but boy, it's like a two bedroom home. Nice little fireplace. This is gorgeous. Josie's cabin was the last stop on my self-guided tour of the Cub Creek Road. So now I am going to backtrack, drive down the same exact road, and now actually head out into Colorado, head to the other visitor center. And for the next self-guided tour, I will be doing it, well, yep, still self-guided, but I actually downloaded the National Park Services app, and I will be following the app along Harper's Corner Trail um, along that road out there on the Colorado side and it'll be playing audio through my car giving me viewpoints pointing out things as I go by mile marker these self-guided tours are the coolest thing ever so I'm really excited to be able to have the audio running through my car it's kind of like when you go to a museum and you put the headphones in they will be exactly like that where I can pull up to the stop it'll tell me what all about it and then this way I don't have to use paper or carry anything around um, also makes it much easier since I'm driving myself I don't have to pull over constantly and be reading things so I'm really Really excited about this I'm gonna stop in the town of dinosaur Colorado hopefully get some lunch before I get this tour started and just like that I'm back in Colorado
ice cream is fire. There was people in that store that had traveled from Bernal. I'm in Dinosaur, Colorado now at this point. It's like a 20, 30 mile drive. It's like not very close. Came just for this ice cream. This is delicious. People were eating up the pecan praline and they ran out just before I got some. I got some milk and honey and oh my gosh, this is delicious. So five taco review right here. I've got my ice cream in hand and I'm now at the other visitor center in the Colorado side. This is the Canyon area visitor center. I hope they let me take this in, but we're going to see how different it is over on this side of the park. Okay, can't take the ice cream cone inside. That visitor center is nothing quite like the other one, but it did have a cute little movie and those comparison photos from like 2013 back to like the 1800s are really cool, but definitely recommend going to the Dinosaur Quarry side. It's only like 20 minutes away, so just, just go to that one. So now, like I said, I'm gonna be doing another dr self-driving tour. This time I have my phone connected to the National Park app so that I can do a guided tour. And I'm gonna have it talk about this Canyon Visitor Center. The Canyon Visitor Center is the gateway to the monument's mountains and river canyons. This building is open daily in summer and closed during the winter. Exhibits and a park film orient visitors to resources and staff are available to answer questions. The Harper's Corner Scenic Drive is a 31 mile, 50 kilometer, one way auto tour route from the Canyon Visitor Center to Harper's Corner. Dinosaur fossils are not located in this section of the park. As the road gains in elevation, the scenery reflects the changing ecosystems. The diversity of life within dinosaur is enhanced by drastic elevation changes, ranging from 4,750 to 9,000 feet, 1,448 to 2,743 meters. Some plants, like manzanita, a green round leaf shrub, have very specific habitat needs. The only place within the monument with the right combination of soil type, sun exposure, and moisture level to support Manzanita is here at Escalante Overlook. So right down there is the confluence of the Green and the Yampa River. That's where we all yelled, BOOM! BOOM! I got three. That was pretty cool. Echo Park, it's said that back when Powell did his expedition, you could hear a gunshot echo 12 times. We only heard ours about like five, but that's Echo Park, that's what it's named for. It looks super crazy from up here, way different than it does from down below. Okay, I had to pull over driving because there's these like big black things in the middle of the road. And um, I was like, I'm gonna, keep hitting this I don't know what these are I got out and I still have no idea what this is could somebody please like drop in the comments what this insect is it looks like a crawfish mixed with a grasshopper holy oh my god it's hopping around it's like giving me the heebie-jeebies sorry I just shook the video everywhere I literally just shook this is so creepy you probably can't see it but this thing is huge
cool. The different colors of the mountains from up above, the way things are so swoopy, they look like Bob Ross paintings. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is unbelievable. that this is more spectacular than the Grand Canyon. This is way cooler than Arches National Park. This is truly unlike anything I've ever seen before. The way the rocks are shooting up out of the ground, the way they're twisting and curving, <laughs> this is unreal. Um, I hate that this is one of the lesser visited places in Colorado and Utah because people are missing out. I, uh, I haven't even gotten to the top of Australia and I'm about to cry because it's unbelievably beautiful this is surreal it looks so different than how it looked from below and even down below it was absolutely gorgeous but this this is this is something else wow this is the view from the top I am just absolutely mind blown right now. This is spectacular. What a great way to end my trip here in Dinosaur National Monument. I've been exploring around the Vernal, Utah, Colorado area for exactly a week now. It started with a four day river expedition with Dinosaur River Expeditions going down the Green River for about 45 miles, starting at the gates of the door to Split Mountain, which is where I started today. My final day here in Dinosaur, I started it at the Dinosaur Quarry around the Split Mountain area and then have kind of backtracked and gone to all the overlooks of all the places that I saw from the river. I can't recommend this place enough. This is spectacular. I'm going to be back. I'm going to be back, Dinosaur. You just wait. Thank you, Mother Nature, for providing such incredible places for me to come find. And thank you to the National Park System for protecting these lands. Thank you, Dinosaur National Monument, for such a great trip. Now I need to start heading home. I've got work on Monday.